Hello everyone. Welcome back to our story time. I just, I, I think it's been kind of fun, the lessons that we've had. If you've been following along, you've seen the different ones that we've done this week. We've talked about a theme of our bodies. And so we talked about our ears. Last week I talked about the eyes. This week we're going to talk about another wonderful creation in our bodies that God made, our brains. And it's just a wonderful machine, and it works kind of like a computer. So if you spend any time at home on your computer, you kind of know a little bit about how your brain works. Um, brains can store up information. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a diagram here in a minute of the, what the different parts of the brain do and how they work. But I thought it's really interesting that you can store up information from all of the different sources, like the things that you see or the things that you hear or smell or taste or feel. Um, and your brain can interpret those so that you can understand uh, the world around you. So I think that's really cool that we can, our brain is like a computer, but like a computer, it depends on the programming or how it is set up and used um, that, that makes it more efficient or less efficient. And so, you know, we might have a lot of useless information going into our brains every day. And some of those things are helpful, but other things are not so helpful. And so we can have a little bit of, uh, too much going on and it doesn't help our computer to work very well. If you have a computer at home, sometimes your computer just gets logged down and it doesn't work as quickly and as efficiently as it used to. And sometimes it's because there's a lot of junk being stored on your computer that you need to get rid of. Well, today we're going to talk about, we're going to start out kind of like we have the last couple of weeks. We're going to look at a diagram of the parts of the brain and we're going to talk a little bit about how the brain works and then we'll move into our lesson for today. So I have a diagram right here. I, th I found a really colorful one and I liked it because it'll help us to talk about the different parts of our brain. So we'll start in the front here and the front part is called the, the each part of this brain is called a lobe or you have a brain stem. Okay. And so we're going to talk about the lobe. So the first lobe is a frontal lobe and it's thinking, speaking, memory, and movement. And then right behind that one on the top here, we have the parietal lobe, which controls our language and our touch. And then we come to the temporal lobe, and it controls our hearing, our learning, and our feelings. And then we get back here to this part, and it's called the occipital lobe, and it deals with our vision and our color perception. And that kind of ties in with your eyes that we learned about last week. And then the cerebellum is this last little part back here, right next to your brain stem, and it controls our balance and our coordination. And then the brain stem is responsible for our breathing, our heart rate, and our temperature. So those are some of the different parts of your brain. We're going to only focus on a small part of our brain today, and I'll tell you about what that's going to be here in a minute. God designed us to rely on our brains. You see how much the brain controls of what our body does. And as we learn and grow, our brains also learn and grow. Um, and things get stored in our brains. So we have like memory and the ability to learn new things like languages or uh, to learn a skill or you know, I like to sew and, and craft and things like that. And I like to do things that challenge me that I have to learn something new because it keeps your brain active. And that's a good thing to do is to keep your brain working and being active and constantly learning new things. You know, we only use a very small part of our brain and God gave us this great, wonderful machine that we need to use it a little bit more and rely on it some more. So I want to challenge you. Maybe you need to go out and learn something new. Uh, maybe you need to learn to play a musical instrument or learn a new language or uh, even building with Legos and things like that are ways that we can challenge our brain and, and help our brain to learn new things. So it's really cool that we have a brain that can uh, adapt and learn new things. Well, in the, front, in the lesson that we're going to look to today, we're going to go to the Bible here in a minute. We're going to talk about two main parts of our brain that I want to focus on today. The frontal and the temporal lobe. 
The frontal lobe, again, controls our thinking, our speaking, our memory, and our movement. And then the temporal controls the things that we hear, our feelings, and it's in control of learning. When you learn something new, you're uh, activating your temporal lobe in your brain. These parts are vital um, to helping us to live in this world that we live in today. So we're going to look at, um, in the Bible, I looked up how many times the words thought or thoughts is mentioned. And I found about, there, there's more than a hundred times, depending on what uh, version of the Bible that you look in. Uh, and so I'm going to go through and read a couple that I uh, enjoyed reading in, in the Bible today that were about thinking or about thoughts. So we're going to go to... The very first one is one of my favorites that I like to uh, think about um, on a daily basis. So let's go to, we're in Psalms uh, chapter 19. We're going to read verse 14. This says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's just, you know, we want our thoughts to glorify God. We want to have thoughts that are on him and meditate on the things that he teaches us. And then the next verse we're going to read is from Psalms also. It's from 139 verse 2. And it says, You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down, and you are familiar with all my ways. And that's God speaking, um, that saying that God knows everything about us, our thoughts, our actions, everything that we do, everything that we say. Um, the next verse I want to read is from Proverbs. Proverbs uh, chapter 14, verse 8 says, The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. In other words, if you stop and think about something before you do it, then you are being very wise and prudent. If you don't, then you're going to get yourself into trouble is what I think that means. Um, Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. So that's telling us a little bit of something that I want to focus on today, that um, we don't think the same way that God thinks. God has other thoughts that are higher than what we can. He understands a lot more than we want to give him credit for. And so I want you to think about the kind of thoughts that you have and how do they measure up to what God wants us to be thinking about. So we're going to go ahead and move on in our uh, story time. We're going to talk about training our brains to think differently. Did you know you could do that? You can go from being negative about something when you learn about it and you experience, then you get to be a little bit, you have different thoughts about it. And so that's what I want you to think about today is how can we, what kind of things should we be thinking about? How can we train our brains? So we're going to look at uh, a couple of verses in Philippians chapter four. That's in the New Testament it's one of the letters that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. And he wanted them to know some things that were important to know about God. Because they were going through a difficult time. And he wanted to encourage them. So this is what we're going to read. The kind of um, ways that God wants us to think differently. So I'm going to go ahead and start out. We're in Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to read verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when our focus is on Him, and we're thinking about the things that God wants us to think about. And we go to him and we ask him for help. Then we can understand how God is at work in our lives. And he wants us to know that he is changing our thoughts and our actions. And we have to listen and we have to learn from what we read 
about what God wants us to think about. And we're going to go to that in a minute, a couple of verses that tell us the th kind of things that God wants us to think about. You know, I have a lot of useless knowledge in my head. Um, sometimes it's helpful because I might find myself in a situation and I know something and I can do something about it. And it's very good to have a lot of different knowledge in your head. But other times it gets in the way and it can cause me to be frustrated and have lots of anxiety and not know how to function in a, in a situation. And so uh, it's good to know the kind of things that God tells us that we should be putting in our brains, that we should be storing in our memory. So let's read again in Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Did you hear what that verse said? It gave us a whole list of things that we should be thinking about. You know, Paul, when he was writing this letter, not only were the people of Philippi going through a difficult time, Paul was in captivity. He was in prison because of his faith. He was an apostle and he went all over the world at that time and he told the people about Jesus, but it got him into some trouble. He faced some really difficult times. Let me tell you some of the things that happened to Paul uh, while he was telling people about Jesus. Um, he was stoned. He was beaten. He was uh, left for dead once. He was in a shipwreck. He went without food, without water. He once had to escape through a window because the people in the town wanted to kill him. He was put on trial and in prison, and he had some kind of malady or illness that affected him the whole time he was in prison. And that was just in the beginning. That was just a small part of what Paul had experienced. But let me tell you something. Paul, no matter what he found himself in, whatever situation he was in, we don't see him complaining about that. We see him giving glory to God who helped him through those situations. And he was able to take his experience and help other people who were going through similar types of persecution or suffering. Um, no matter, he was... You know, we see Paul, he always is thankful that God is with him. He knows God's with him. And he knows that all things are possible with God. And all he has to do is trust God and focus on God. And God will help him in difficult times. You know, we can train our brains to do that too. You know, we can look at difficult situations and we can feel stuck or angry or confused. And we can just kind of settle there. Well, that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to think differently. He wants us to look at situations from his eyes. How can we do that? Is that difficult? Well, yes, it is. It's not going to be easy. It's not natural for us to do that. But that's like I told you, your brain is like a computer. And it depends on you and how you program that brain. So what can we do? Well, we can depend on Jesus, and he will help us. I'm going to read you another verse from uh, Philippians chapter 4. And this is one of the most vital things that we need to remember about God. And I want you to listen to it. It's verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Did you hear what that said? It said, I can do not some things, he, it says we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. That is awesome to know that no matter what kind of situation I'm in, whether I have the knowledge or not, I have God on my side. And I can trust God to help me in every situation. And I can do it because he promised that he would always be with us and help us. So here's my challenge. Spend some time in God's word looking at the words that he has so graciously given us. And a good place to start is in the Psalms because it's just verse after verse of ways that God has been helpful in the lives of whoever was writing the Psalm, whether it was David or someone else. And they wrote it down and we have it today so we can look at it. And when you focus on the words of God and what God has to say, 
then your brain will be remembering those kind of things and will help you in difficult situations. You know, verses will come to my mind that I memorized when I was a child at just the right moment sometime. And so that's why it's important for us to be feeding God's word and the things of God into our beautiful brains that God created in each and every one of us. Let's pray, and I hope you'll come back next week for another lesson. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this brain that you gave us, and we thank you that it is a brain that can be trained, and it can learn new things, and it can also learn to trust you and to rely on you more. And so help us as we go through our daily lives to remember to think about things that are pure or true or trustworthy or lovely or important to you. And Lord, help us each and every day to remember your word. Help us to find ways to place your word around our house so we can see it. You know, I write verses down so that I can look at them in the morning and read them, Lord. And I just pray that each one of us would find some way that we could be putting your words into our brains to help us through any kind of situation we may find ourselves in. Help us to glorify you and to learn more and more about you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye for now, and I'll see you next week.